Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to divide. Dividing radicals is something special. All right, here we go. Suppose I take the square root of 64 over 5. Well, that's going to be the square root of 64 over the square root of 5. And we know what the principal square root of 64 is. And all that background noise is uh, from school. I'm in my office, and someone's banging on the drink machine. All right, let's go back to the problem. The square root of 64 is 8, so my answer is 8 o over the square root of 5. Right? Wrong. We don't allow radicals on the bottom of a fraction, so I'm going to have to do something called rationalizing the denominator. Let's rationalize the denominator. Rationalize means to make rational. And remember that in mathematics, the word rational means fraction. Here we go. I have 8 over the square root of 5. How can I make the square root of 5 a number that's not in a radical? Simple. Well, maybe it's not so simple. But I do know that if I multiply the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, I'll get the square root of 25, which is 5 without a radical. Watch. I'm going to multiply by 1. Because when I multiply by 1, I don't change whatever I'm multiplying. So 8 over the square root of 5 times 1 is just 8 over the square root of 5. But wait. I can make 1 take any form I want to make it take, just so long as I have the same number in the numerator and denominator of the fraction. So let me multiply this way. I'll take the square root, uh, I'll take 8 over the square root of 5 times 1 in the form of the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. This will give me, on top, 8 times the square root of 5. On the bottom, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, <coughs> which is the square root of 25. Now, you know what the square root of 25 is. It's 5. So the answer is going to be 8 times the square root of 5 over 5. Now, before I say I'm done, let me remind you that this 5 on the bottom is not under a radical. This 5 on top is under a radical. So you can't cancel. You can't cancel out the 5s. just won't work. Instead, just stay with this answer. This answer is acceptable. All right, let's move on. Now it's going to get trickier. I'm going to rationalize the cube root of 6 fifths. That means I'm going to have a cube root on the top, the cube root of 6, and a cube root on the bottom, the cube root of 5. Whoa, we're in a pickle now. So let us come over to the side of the paper and have a little discussion. I should have gone to the other side, actually. It would have been better to go here. On the bottom, I'm going to have the cube root of 5. Let me remind you that there's nothing I can do with that. But if I had the cube root of 5 to the third. Now, what is that? That's 5 to the 3 over 3 power. 3 over 3 is 1. So that's 5 to the 1 power, which is just 5 with no radical. Now, let's stop and think how I can make the cube root of 5 equal the cube root of 5 to the third. Well, I could if I were to multiply it by the cube root of 5 squared. Because look back here. The cube root of 5 is really the cube root of 5 to the 1 power. 
Now, if I multiply the cube root of 5 to the 1 times the cube root of 5 to the 2, I'll have the cube root of 5 to the 1 power times 5 to the 2 power. When I multiply like bases, I add the exponents, right? So this will be the cube root of 5 to the 3rd. And what is the cube root of 5 to the 3rd? It's the cube root, uh, well, it's 5 to the 3 over 3 power, which is 5 to the 1 power, which is 5. Bingo! That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to start with the cube root of 6 over the cube root of 5 to the 1 power, because that was the original problem. I'm going to multiply by 1 in the form of the cube root of 5 squared over the cube root of 5 squared. What's that going to give me? Ah! Well, up top, I'll have the cube root of 6 times 5 squared. On the bottom, I'll have the cube root of 5 to the 1 times 5 to the 2. So, I'm going to have, well, 5 squared is 25. Let's see what 6 times 25 is. 6 times 25, 30, carry the 3. 12 plus 3 is 15. It's 150. So, I'll have the cube root of 150 on top over the cube root of 5 to the 3rd power. Now, twice we figured out what that is. The cube root of 5 to the third power is 5. So our final answer is going to be the cube root of 150 over 5. Now don't go dividing this 5 into the 150. You can't do it. And if you want to make absolutely sure that 150 doesn't have a cube root, just break it down. I'll have 150. What does that equal? It equals 15 times 10. Now, 15 is 3 times 5, and 10 is 2 times 5. This is what 150 equals, and there is not 3 of the same number in there. So no problem at all. This is my final answer, and it doesn't need to be simplified anymore. You like that? Well, we're going to get back to some even more interesting ones in just a few minutes. Bye-bye for now. Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to rationalize a denominator that has two terms. How about 6 over 7 minus the square root of 2? There's only one method that works here, and that is we have to multiply the denominator with two terms by its conjugate. That is 7 plus the square root of 2. And since we really need to multiply by 1, the only way we can ensure that this is a form of 1 is if the numerator and the denominator, that is the top and the bottom, are both exactly the same thing. All right, now, if I were you, I would put parentheses around every numerator and denominator that has two terms. Now, multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together. So on top, we'll have six times, parentheses, seven plus the square root of 2. And on the bottom, we'll have 7 minus the square root of 2 times 7 plus the square root of 2. Now, let's foil the, uh, the two, the two, two term uh, denominators together. Meanwhile, let's just leave the top in factored form. Okay, over.
over. Now I'm going to multiply first outside, inside, last. That will give us 49 plus 7 times the square root of 2 minus 7 times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 4. Now notice that you have seven, yeah, the two middle terms, 7 times the square root of 2 minus 7 times the square root of 2. Uh, guess what? That's 0. So this is what we're going to have. Meanwhile, the square root of 4, what is the square root of 4? It's 2. So we're going to be subtracting 2. So now the top is going to be 6. Oops, times 7 plus the square root of 2. That's kind of messy. Over 49 minus 2. Thus, the answer will be 6 times 7 plus the square root of 2 over 47. Now the reason you leave the top like this is that suppose that this bottom had been some other number that either 6 or 3 or 2 will go into evenly. Then you could have reduced the 6 over here and whatever the denominator is. So you just have to be careful because if there's a way to reduce your final answer, you have to do it. But for now, this is the correct answer, and I'm very happy to be done with this problem. We have rationalized the denominator. Talk to you later.